Hi guys, in this tutorial we are going to build an image editing app um, which is going to load an image and do something with it. Um, in particular we're going to apply various filters. So if we go with image and general class would be image editing app then we can start building some stuff. Right, what do I need? Uh, well, I need the starting point. I need this to be here for consistency, and I'll just go with that. <clears throat> so, what do I want? I think I want a border pane so that I can have my menus at the top. Um, and size of it, I don't know. Let's go with. Usual, I guess, 800, 600. Get a uh, top. I want get children. How do you set top? Okay. Uh, I want a menu bar. Is that what I want? Menu bar. Get menus, add a menu. And I'm going to have um, what is it called? Just menu. And then add the bar here. Um, I need probably a name for this. Uh, it's a filter or filter. There you go. To specify to the user that there's actually more stuff coming. Get items and new menu item uh, name, just like this. If I want, um, just want to see how it looks. Filter and then there's a name. Okay, so when I press the name, then there's going to be some stuff happening. So um, right, we need an image. I recently found an interesting um, open. API or rather a website that gives you images. So we'll go with that for the image views. I need two image views. Right, V1 is new image view, new image, and the website thing's called uh, placekitten.com. And it's very intuitive. You pass in the width. For example 300 and then the height 300 and gives you back an image of this width and then this height and I want set center new horizontal box containing two images so that we can compare um, what our filter does to the image okay I don't have the second image so we'll go with that As you can see, it's taking a while um, to open up a window because it's loading this thing. And that works, which is good. Can we load this in the background? I think there is a way, yeah. There's a billion that we can pass in to load in the background. Let's go with that. I'm hoping this is going to be faster with respect to opening a window. Yeah, and then it will load sometime in the future. That's good enough. <clears throat> right, uh, what do we want to do now? Um, this is 800 by 600. So let's go with 400 for the width so that we can fit two images. And 550 accounting for um, taking into account the size of the bar. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, now what do we do? How do I apply filter? Um, let's start thinking at high level. So a filter is a well, essentially it's a function that takes an image and returns an image, right? 
So it takes an image, returns an image. And uh, now it implements it because it's an uh, interface. Uh, return null is fine for now. We'll deal with that later. Um, let's give it a name so we can distinguish different. Um, how do I automatically produce this? Generate um, is the other way around. Create a field. Oh, there we go. No, I don't want final. final. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I can use this to build my filter menu. Uh, let's have a list of filters. List of, oh right, I'm still in Java 8, okay. Um, how did we do it previously as list? And then I can start populating it. Uh, new filter, and then I pass in the name of the filter. So we're going to have um, the invert filter, we're going to have um, black and white, um, red, green, and blue, I guess. The standard ones, red, green. And then obviously you can add more stuff, um, but that's, um, sufficient for an example and then using this I can populate these things filters for each um, filter that goes inside and it's going to be a new item This is where the name goes. Add the item to the menu thing and item. Do something, basically. Um, we don't know what we're doing just yet. Actually, no, we do. Um, we have this function that we can use. So. We need access to these things. Let's put them here. Let's start grouping some stuff. Um, right, so item is an action. This is the thing that um, will happen when we press that menu item. So we take the image from um, the original one and we do something with it. View set image um, filter apply. There we go. So we're taking the original image, we're applying our filter, which returns back another image, and we're setting that to our second view. Currently, that won't do anything. In fact, I'll just return the same thing. I just want to get a high level architecture going so I can see what's um, what's where. We have this image, we can select our invert filter and it basically just returns the same image as do every other filter, uh, as does every other filter. Um, right, so I think we're done with the high level stuff. That's pretty much it, right? Yeah, um, let's go with the low-level low stuff, implement that. So how do we map from one image to another? Well, each filter needs to have some sort of color mapping, I guess. Um, well, first of all, let's create our new image because we need that anyway. If this is the original image. Uh, let's call it source. And this is the image that we're creating. Source get width. I need to convert that into an int because I remember that it returns a double, which is not what we need. And that takes an integer. Yeah. 
So we got the same size image. Um, what do we do now? Well, we need to go through. We need to go through each pixel, right? Uh, so height for each pixel in one row, which is width. Um, we take one color, make sure to import the JavaFX color stuff, not the AWT. We read from the source. And we write to the new one, set color X and Y, and then we need the color C2, which is, yeah, which is what we're going to use as the implementation of each filter. So if we take, um, if we take a function that takes a color and returns a color, um, color map, and then I'll let the ID produce me a field. Yep, that's what I want. And then I can use the color map to map from the original color to the new color, which I can then set to the new image. And then we return, yeah, we return that new image. Right, which means I need to populate these things. So we take a color, and this is where functional programming, again, is um, really nice to work with. And then I return a different color, um, such as invert. Black and white, uh, is there a black and white? <clears throat> is there a discolor, desaturate? I don't think desaturate is that. There's grayscale, let's go with grayscale. Um, what do we do with black and white? Um, let's go with um, some kind of DIY version of that. I'm going to produce a value for each color. I'm going to check if that value is closer to black. If it is, then use black, otherwise use white. Um, I'm just going to return all the um, RGB values, or the sum of. <clears throat> it's R, G, and then, yeah, so it's R, G, and then B. Now, the minimum value is zero, because this goes from zero to one, right? Yeah, in range zero to one. Um, the maximum value is one, which means the sum, the maximum value of the sum is three. The minimum is zero. So if the value of C is less than half of that, then it's closer to black, right? Else it's closer to white. Now for red, I'm just going to return, huh. mm. I'm going to return new color with its red set to max, and then use the original green and blue values, and then do something similar with the others. So the original red is used, but the green is set to max. And then here we set blue to max with the original red. Okay, that's a good range of filters that we can use. So I got our original image here, filter in bird colors. That's actually a bit creepy, but it works. That's nice. Um, grayscale, yep, as you'd expect. Uh, black and white, how does this work? Not too bad, actually. Um, I don't know much about art, but this looks like one. Uh, red, green, blue. Right, okay, that seems to be working just fine. So, 
Um, actually, this is pretty extendable. So you, if you want to add new filters, just add new filter and then provide the function which maps from one color to another. That should be enough for most filters. Some complex filters that require you um, require information of several pixels around the original pixel, like blur possibly. Um, for those kind of filters, you'll probably need to um, extend that a bit more. And then once you've changed, once you've filtered the image, so you can actually save that image to file. Uh, I believe I've already done that um, in Paint, possibly. There we go, on save. So take this, copy paste, stick that in there, um, and then you can save your JavaFX image. Uh, well, you need to convert to um, buffered image, I think, first, which you can then save using image IO. Uh, and then you have not only a filtering um, um, app, but also something that you can actually save to file. Um, and as a further extension, you could allow modification of the image by the user. So you can add brushes and stuff like that. In fact, paint app is probably what you're looking for. You can combine these two and then you can have a very DIY-ish uh, paint slash Photoshop. Well, it's probably not going to be at that same level, but it's going to have some basics in there. Right, so in this tutorial, we've looked at um, image view loading, image loading from the web. Um, we've modified an image by constructing a new image, uh, by checking each pixel color and then doing something with that color to obtain a new image. And on that note, uh, thanks for watching.